Welcome back to Way of the Wrench and our episodes on how to become a gearhead. Uh, today's time for a basic video for you guys. Uh, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to safely and competently be able to jack your vehicle up off the ground so you can do work like oil changes and check your brakes and all that good stuff. So let's quit yakking and get going. We're wasting time. All right, now before we get started, there's one thing that we need to figure out first, which is what type of vehicle body we have. Now, there's really only two types nowadays. There's unibody, which is gonna be just about anything brand new. And unibody is where the factory has stamped pieces of sheet metal that the robots at the factory weld together, and it makes one complete unit, right? Otherwise a unitized body, but otherwise slang, we call it unibody. So anything new, except maybe trucks is gonna be unibody. And then the other type is called body on frame. So we still have a sheet metal body that's put together and spot welded at the factory, but the difference is that body is bolted to a frame. And uh, usually vehicles that have this kind of body on frame style are ones that have to carry a lot of weight and loads. So um, old and new trucks are gonna be all body on frame. And um, anything old, we're talking 50s and 60s and 70s, uh, those old muscle cars, a lot of those can be body on frame as well. All right, so sitting behind me here is a 2008 Toyota Yaris, and this is the car that we're going to jack up off the ground. Now, I have it sitting here by a hoist because I thought it would be a better idea for me to get the car way up in the air, get the camera underneath so I can show you really well what makes this a unibody car so that when you get into your vehicle at home, you can tell whether it's unibody or body on frame. So I'm gonna lift that up. Uh, there will be future videos on how to use this hoist and everything about it. However, keep in mind, a lot of these points we're going to learn about are probably the points we're going to be using for lifting as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, now that it's lifted up in the air, it's a little bit easier for me to film for you guys. But for you, you just get your head underneath, get a flashlight and look at what is under your vehicle. My first clue that this is a unibody is the fact that this is a newer vehicle. So I've got that going for it already. And then when I look under here, there is no frame rail. There's no massive, big, strong structural piece of steel that runs from the front bumper all the way to the back of the bumper. It's just not here. So this is already a unibody in my mind. So when you're looking at your car, you've got your door panel right here. And then right underneath the door panel is your rocker panel. Okay, now if you follow that sheet metal down underneath, where it goes into a little lip, this part right here, that's where it's meeting the lip of the floor pan. And where those two come together, this is called your rocker panel lip. Okay, now this is the strongest part of the unibody and it's designed to hold the vehicle's weight. Now, they often put also a notch or a mark or an arrow or a rubber pad or a hole where there's a, a certain spot where they want you to lift it from. So in this case, this is the rocker panel lip and you can see that there's two little notches. So they're telling you that you should put your pad or the jack or the safety stands right between these posts. And what usually that means is they have a second or even a third piece of sheet metal built into that spot to reinforce that spot so it's strong enough for you to lift on without damaging the car. But this part of the rocker panel lip is just behind the front wheel and so there will be the exact same thing at the rear of the vehicle where I have placed the other pad on the hoist. So right in here there is the two notches and we are on that rocker panel lip. All right, now that we know that this is a unibody vehicle, we still need to know where we can safely roll a hydraulic floor jack underneath and somewhere safe that we can lift the front of the car up so that we don't cause any damage. Now, uh, places you do not want to lift the vehicle up off are things like plastic bumpers or any kind of like wind guards. Uh, nothing fragile like an engine oil pan or a pan under a transmission. Uh, you don't want anything under your steering or suspension components. None of that is designed to lift the vehicle up off the ground. So what we are looking for is something called a cross member. And what it looks like is a very strong structural piece of stamped steel that usually is underneath the motor and runs sometimes from the left to the right and sometimes from the middle of the car from the back to the front. In this case, we have a cross member right here. That'll be nice and strong for us to lift off and we'll find a center spot that we can lift right here. So here's a better shot of the cross member running from left to right on this vehicle and basically right in the center of the vehicle where that big bolt is, that's gonna be a spot for us to lift up and safely get the vehicle up off the ground. Now, if we wanna jack the back of the vehicle, same thing. There's a lot of places where we should not be putting a jack. Uh, things like plastic bumpers, 
our spare tire wheel well, any kind of exhaust component, it's just thin sheet metal. So things like tailpipes and mufflers. Uh, once again, no steering and suspension stuff as well, no gas tanks. So a safe place where you can lift on the rear of the vehicle is between the two rear wheels, they will either have a differential, which I'll show in a second, which is found on rear wheel drive cars, or if you've got a front wheel drive, then you're gonna have a strong structural piece of steel that is between the two rear wheels and that is your rear axle beam. So right here in the center, that's a nice strong place that we can safely lift off. Now this rear axle beam is also a quite long flat one. So we can use the center to jack up the vehicle. And if we want, we could put jack stands, safety stands to the left and to the right on that rear axle beam, as long as you put them out wide enough to make sure that this thing is stable and not tippy. Another spot that you can actually jack up the vehicle that's designed to be strong are these tow hooks. Now you can see this one is made up of some pretty thick stamped strong sheet metal and there's a little hole in there so that the tow truck driver can grab with a hook and a chain and pull this vehicle out of a ditch. And usually if there's one, there's another one. So there's the two, so they would probably pull out of both. So you can safely jack up off of these, but I would not put a safety stand under here because it's not a big enough surface. Uh, you're gonna put those on our rocker panel lips. So to show the other type, which is body on frame, I've got a 1996 GMC Jimmy and I'm gonna lift it up so that way I can show you how to really tell whether you have a frame or unibody on this guy. All right, cool, let's check this one out. All right, now in this case, this one's really quite obvious. You get underneath and what you're looking for is a big, strong, structural piece of steel. And uh, it can be a C-shape or it can be completely boxed in. Uh, main thing is that it continues all the way to the front bumper and all the way to the back. Another dead giveaway for having a frame is that the body is separated from the frame. So there's a gap in here. And uh, the way that this body is mounted to the frame is usually there's some rubber bushings and there's about eight to 10 bolts that bolt it together. Now, really important to note, once you know you have a frame, technically these bodies can really sometimes look like they've got a rocker panel lip still. However, those are not structurally strong enough to lift the entire frame off the ground and you will damage your vehicle. So if you have a frame rail, you are not jacking up or putting safety stands underneath your rocker panel lip. So the other way of telling if you have a frame vehicle is if the frame rail, that big strong structural piece of steel goes all the way to the back bumper. So there's the back bumper and goes down up to the front of the body, go up over the wheel arch and continues. And it just keeps going and going and going. This is all frame rail here all the way. And then it goes back up over the wheel arch and then back in there connects to the front bumper. So this is a body on frame vehicle. So to drive the point home, this is a 1967 Pontiac Parisian, and this is a body on frame vehicle. In fact, there is no frame under this thing right now. It's just the body. And this is the frame. So those two would bolt together with bushings and bolts. So body on frame. So for lifting the front of a body on frame vehicle, you're gonna go underneath where the engine is and you are going to look for a very strong structural piece of steel. Once again, that's our cross member and it's gonna be running from left to right on a body on frame vehicle because it usually attaches to the left and right frame rails. So what we're gonna do is find somewhere right in the center here and um, balance our pad of our hydraulic floor jack right underneath and lift up there. If I wanna lift the back of a body on frame vehicle, usually those vehicles are rear wheel drive, meaning that there is going to be a drive shaft going into a part here called a differential. And this differential is designed to hold the weight of the vehicle. So the center of this big round orange part, otherwise known as the pumpkin, right here is where you can safely put the pad of your hydraulic floor jack and lift the back end of the vehicle up. Now once you have it up and you want to put some safety stands, you can either put them on the frame rails or you can put them on the axle tubes to the left and right here. Just put them out wide enough that the vehicle isn't tippy from side to side. Now once you've lifted the front or the back of a body on frame vehicle, you're going to want to support it with some jack stands. So you can put these anywhere on this frame rail as long as it's on a flat section, not where it's starting to curve or angle up. And when you place it somewhere, make sure that there's no fuel lines, brake lines, electrical wires are going to get pinched when you put them there. Now, something really important to note, if you're looking underneath your car and you're looking at the spots that I just told you to safely lift off, like your rock or panel lips or the frame rails, 
and you start seeing stuff like this where there's rust, unbelievably amounts of rust and pieces are missing in the spots I've told you to lift off, you're gonna have to find somewhere else that I've mentioned that's safe to lift because this is just dangerous. You're asking for this car to fall down and crush you to death. All right, now that we know where we can lift up safely on body on frame and unibody vehicles, let's lower this guy down and I'm gonna show you how to do that with a hydraulic floor jack. Now to be able to lift up your vehicle so you can work on it, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need a rolling hydraulic floor jack. You're gonna need a set of jack stands and you're gonna need a set of wheel chocks. Now, before you attempt to lift your vehicle, whether it's a car or a truck or something even heavier, it's really good practice to check what the actual safety ratings of your lifting equipment is. So these jack stands have a four ton or 8,000 pound rating. So you're gonna make sure that your vehicle is not heavier than that. Otherwise, these are gonna fail on you. And same thing with your lifting jack. So make sure you buy one that's an appropriate amount for your vehicle. And if you don't know what the weight of your vehicle is, you look in your driver's side door, it's either on a sticker or a decal on the end of the door, or it's in the door jam like this. Now it's right here, but I'm gonna turn it so you guys can see it better. So what we're looking for is GVWR, greater vehicle weight. And this one is 1,495 kilos. If you're a little bit rusty in your math, it's times 2.24 pounds, which is about 3,600 pounds. So we're well under the weight for these jack stands. Right, so these hydraulic floor jacks do actually have wheels on them so you can roll around the shop, but they also have a safety purpose to them. So when you are lifting with this lifting pad right underneath a specific spot on the car, when you lift the front and back of the vehicle, as it starts to go up, the position this way actually changes. And so those wheels allow the hydraulic jack to move so it always stays underneath or perpendicular to where you want to lift. If you didn't have them or the wheels were locked, then as you lifted the vehicle up, the jack would have no choice but to start tilting and eventually that would get too much of an angle and it would actually fall out from underneath the vehicle. Now to use this hydraulic floor jack, we actually have to lock the handle, which acts as a valve. So we're gonna go clockwise or ready tidy. And then as you pump the handle up and down, you'll notice that this pad starts to lift up and that can start lifting our vehicle. Now, when we want to lower the vehicle, we have to turn the handle counterclockwise and we can control how fast this goes. It's not an on off switch. It's Think of it as a valve allowing a small amount of water to come out depending on how much we open it up. So as soon as you notice that the car is lowering down, you can just let it go that slow and not continue to turn the handle. So counterclockwise on the handle and you can lower it down. Now we really don't want this vehicle to start moving or roll away on us as we start lifting this vehicle up. So there are three things that we can do to prevent that from happening. The first thing we can do is we can operate the parking brake or the emergency brakes. Now, some cars have it in the center console like this one. Simply pull up on it to engage it. And some cars have a foot pedal underneath where your feet go. Push that down to the floor. Now, keep in mind, this only locks the rear wheels. So if we lift up the rear of the vehicle only with this, then we're going to have a good chance that this car could roll away. Now, the second thing that we can do is place the transmission in a state that makes it safer to work on. So if we have an automatic transmission, I'm going to be putting it into park. If I have a manual transmission, I am going to be putting it into neutral. Now, the reason why I put it into neutral is that I do not want to have this car lurch forward or backwards, depending if I'm in first or reverse, when I put the key on and I have a failed safety clutch switch. Now, if you don't have these wheel chocks at home, you can still do the job safely. You just have to find something that you can put in front and behind the wheel that will make sure that this does not roll on you. It could be a big chunk of wood, a big brick, a big massive rock, just something that's going to prevent the wheel from moving. Next step is rolling this hydraulic floor jack underneath the, the car and you're wanting to position this so that you are centered right on that cross member. So roughly right in the middle of the car and just go underneath the motor and then get your head underneath and get a really good light source so you can see that cross member really well. And I highly recommend you get some coveralls so they can get dirty and get right down on the ground so you can see exactly what you're doing. Get yourself a nice light source. And until you are actually touching that cross member and starting to lift the vehicle up, I would stay down on the ground to make sure that ensure 100% that you are lifting the right spot. Okay, lock the handle and then start pumping. Now, as you're pumping this handle, watch the cosmetic paint and the fender. You don't want to hit that.
Once you've got this vehicle starting to lift up off the ground and you for sure are in the right spot, then you can get up off the ground and safely know that you're lifting up properly. Now the faster you can move this or the more travel this handle can do, the faster the vehicle will go up. Just watch that you're not hitting the front bumper. Right, it's really common for people when they're starting out to not lift the vehicle high enough. So get it, the vehicle lifted up off the ground quite high. Now we have lots of room to work in here. We don't want to be cramped and not enjoying our experiences working on cars. We want lots of room to work. And keep in mind, we're going to lower it on a jack stand. So that's going to lower it a little bit too. There's a really good shot of our lifting point right off of that cross member. Kind of a funky cross member in this car. So now that we have the front end lifted up, it is not safe to get under this vehicle. If that hydraulic jack decides to fail or if it slips out from underneath our lifting point, we're gonna get crushed to death by this vehicle. So you always use these safety stands when you're using a hydraulic floor jack. Now we're gonna put those stands right about a foot behind the front wheel there on our rocker panel lips. Uh, that way we're closer to the front so we're not tippy from front to back when we put it down on the jack stands. So here's our rocker panel, run our hand down till we find a rocker panel lip. And then these two notches are letting us know that they have made this spot really strong. So we are going to center our jack stand right there, right between these, and we're gonna turn this 90 degrees to that. So all you do is you line it up, lift up on the yellow. If it falls down a bit, that's okay. And this is the other side, the passenger side. There's, a, there's our rocker panel, run our hands down. There's a rocker panel lip. And in this case, there are the two notches. So we're gonna center it right there. All right, now we're gonna lower the vehicle by turning the handle counterclockwise or lefty-loosey. And we wanna do it in a very nice, slow and controlled manner. So what I like to do is watch the front of the car as I open the valve. And it's not an on-off switch. You can have it go as slow or as fast as you want, depending where you have your handle. And I highly recommend you are listening with your ears to see if there's any kind of weird noises. And if there's anything going on you don't like, you can always lock the handle and reassess before you actually lower it down on the stands. Now, if I'm doing something like taking my front tires off or checking the front brakes, checking wheel bearings, and I don't actually need to be in here where the jack is, it's always not a bad idea just to leave it in that position. That way you got kind of like a third safety in case something's to happen to those jack stands. Now, I would not leave the handle laying down, otherwise there's a good chance you're gonna trip and fall over it. So what I would do is put it right up so that uh, you don't have that happen. Or maybe you do need this room because you're doing an oil change now. So if that's the case, then just simply lower the hydraulic floor jack and roll it out of the way. Okay, at this point you're ready to get in there and do some work, but there is one thing that we can do to make this 100% safe rather than just crawling underneath and hoping we set it up properly. And all you do is you go to the front of the vehicle, give it a good shake, make sure it's stable, we don't have anything kind of going ooh and tippy and could possibly fall on you once you get underneath the car. Now if I want to lift the rear of this vehicle, the only thing I have to change is I have to put these wheel chocks up to the front wheel because that's the side of the vehicle that's going to be still on the ground. Yeah, now I'm going to show you how to jack up the back and it'll be the same as if I was only doing the back of the vehicle. But in this case, I'm actually going to show you how to put the vehicle up on four stands. And um, this might be useful for changing your tire rotations. That way all four wheels are off the ground. So once again, for lifting the back of the vehicle, I'm going to position this round pad on the hydraulic jack right in the center of the vehicle. Slide it in underneath and under our differential, or in this case, that rear axle tube and get it lifted up off the ground.
right, just to make it clear again, we're between our rear wheels and there's that strong stamped piece of structural steel called our rear axle tube. And we've got the pad of our hydraulic floor jack centered right in there and centered on that lip. All right, so now we know how to lift the front and the rear of the vehicle or the whole vehicle at once and support it safely so we can get some work done. So let's say our work is done, whatever we need it to do, and it's time to take it down. So I am in this case going to lower the rear first, that way I've got the parking brake working as I lower the front. And it's essentially the reverse of what we just did. So jack it up, so it's up off the safety stands, take the safety stands out and away from the vehicle, slowly lower the vehicle down, remove the floor jack, and the last thing is the jump stop. Watch your fingers here, you shouldn't have them anywhere here. Just lift up on the handle, and get your fingers there, so nice to get a pinch with that. Now before you start lowering the vehicle, if you've got the handle up like this and you start lowering it, then it's gonna come down and scratch the paint on the handle. So you're gonna to have to give it a pump up and do the left of UC counter clockwise turn down here so that we're not scratching it up. And scratching up my Japanese Maserati. before you get in the car and drive away, remember not to forget about these wheel chocks, otherwise you're gonna be in for a rude awakening as your Yaris starts turning into a rock climber. Poof! There's another video from Way of the Ranch on how to become a gearhead. This time on how to jack a vehicle safely up so you can do some work. And you guys have just actually unlocked level two gearhead status and I'm super happy about it because that means you were able to lift a car up and do all kinds of new jobs. You're able to change wheels and tires, check bearings, take brakes apart, see the axles, and I'm excited to teach it all to you. So if you have any questions about what we did today, put them down in the description below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you'd like to see any of the behind the scenes stuff, check out our Instagram, Way of the Wrench. And hey, while you're at it, we got a new welding series, how to become a welder. It's gonna be amazing. So until next time, take it easy.